Good morning brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for all your support, folks. Can I ask you if you wouldn't mind, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, if you wouldn't mind doing that, and leaving a comment. I love hearing from you. And if you like my videos, please smash the like button. It just helps the YouTube algorithm um, <clears throat> to bring up my videos on more feeds to people and if you could please share my videos with your family and friends it just helps to get the gospel of Christ out to a broken and dying world um, so let's have a look this morning in my devotional we're going to look at God's promises and the first promise that we find is in Genesis 3 verse 15 I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel although the scriptures do not command us to make promises to God as children of God, being born again of God's Holy Spirit, the Lord has given us liberty to make various kinds of promises. It is permissible to express our devotion to God through promises if they are in dependence upon His character and capacities. As we see in Psalm 18, verse 1, the psalmist says, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. It is also acceptable to make godly confessions through promises that are based on His promises to us. In Hebrews 13, verse 5 and 6, we see that He Himself has said, I will never leave nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear. Because that is based on His capacity okay, and His character. We are even allowed to make predictive promises concerning the details of our lives. If we are subject to God's will, if the Lord's will, we shall live and do this or that. That's in James chapter 4 verse 15. Still, the work of God in our lives hinges upon God's promises to us. In fact, our God is characteristically a God of promises. In fact, our God typically works through promises. <clears throat> is as seen as early as the third chapter of the Bible. Here we see God made a very strategic set of promises. He says, I will put in an enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. These prophetic promises are addressed to Satan, but they were given in the hearing of Adam and Eve, and of course they were recorded in the scriptures for everyone else to consider as we read the Bible. These promises reveal some of the consequences of spiritual rebellion as well as announcing God's remedy for the sin of man. He says, I will put enmity, which is hatred, intense hatred, between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. These words declare the inevitability 
of a spiritual warfare as well as the certainty of the cross of Christ. The inevitability of spiritual warfare is a major theme in scripture. This warfare is documented throughout the word of God. As we see in 1 Chronicles 21 verse 1 tells us, Now Satan stood up against Israel and moved David to number Israel. It was an account when David did the census when he was not supposed to. And then in Acts 5 verse 3 we see Ananias why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? That's the account of Ananias and Sapphira. And then we also see in Revelation 12 so the great dragon was cast out and the serpent of old called the devil and, the, and Satan, who deceives the whole world. So there's a major scheme of spiritual struggle and warfare. Now, warfare of a spiritual nature is to really <coughs> kill God's people. Um, Nevertheless, the cross of Christ would provide victory over the enemy and escape from the sinful world. For all who would embrace this provision of the cross of Christ. Okay, so in Galatians 1 we see in verses 3 to 4, grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil age. Folks, <clears throat> as we go into this week, let us consider God's promise to us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And he has provided Christ as a sacrifice for the provision of his promise to us that he will deliver us. As we read in Galatians chapter 1. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. So that's the promise when we in Christ, we have grace, we have peace from God the Father and Christ. And who gave himself, Christ willingly gave himself for our sins. That's a promise. That we might be, that he might deliver us from this present evil age. So that's the promise we need to take into this week. And as we ponder these scriptures this week, may the Lord bless you indeed. Folks, let's just commit this week to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we just come before you committing our week to you for May you fill us with your Holy Spirit, lead and guide us and protect us. And as we reflect on your promise, Lord, that you will never leave us nor forsake us, and that your grace and your peace is given to us through the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil age. So thank you for your promise. We ask all these things in your loving Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen.